And often everyone always tells me, I'm going to work really hard. I'm going to make a lot of money. And then I'm going to switch and do something else. The problem with that is like, what are you going to do? No one's going to hire you. Like I get stacks of resumes from, is it like Hamilton, Chapman or whatever, one of the recruiting firms. And I can tell you all the hedge fund names that you Citadel, Two Sigmas, all these employees they've churned out are coming across my desk and they're like, come hire this guy. They're really bright. And I'm like, they made it a year at Citadel. Like, you know, I don't want them. Like they, they couldn't last at Citadel. They seem to be chasing dollars. They're not going to be chasing academic rigor. And so you start to think about like, what do you want culturally? And I think there's two different people. There are people that really thrive in that. Like I've met people that are just like, I mean, they're in their 50s and they're still like crazy energetic and they have all this passion to work a million hours. But I think for a lot of quants, especially those that come from like math backgrounds, it's like, I just want to do math. Like I just want to sit down, you know, a quiet place to read, pull out a textbook, work on some hard problem, code up some solutions. And so I think a lot of that grind is different areas of the industry. And so I think it's important for like students or even practitioners. Like when I go look for a new job, I talk to people that have worked there. I talk to the management team. I ask what the cultures and you'll see the people that are interviewing you that stick there and like it. They are like, oh yeah, it's cutthroat and only the best survive. And it's this great place to be. And you're thinking in your head, like, I hope I can survive the next 12 months in this firm and make my $300,000 paycheck that I'm going to get. But also I might not be there in a year. And you might have a non-compete or you might have some other sort of issue with that. I think the other piece most people have missed, especially now, to be very weary, most comp at these funds is paid out in bonus. So you might get a $100,000, $120,000 base, which is decent. And you might pull a $200,000 bonus. But that was years past when the market's been good. We're starting to see the market's a little shaky. Tariffs are hitting. Like you might come out making 120, get no bonus for the year this next year and be looking for a job where the buddy next to you might have found a slower paced, lower paying job, whether it's on the banking side, whether it's a mom and pop shop, like a lot of small hedge funds, for example, they don't have the money to pay the $200,000, $300,000 comp with bonus and everything. And so you might take that safe, secure role, learn a lot more and be have a guaranteed comp coming out of this that's a lot more comfortable. And so I think it's definitely something to think about as you're going through the educational process and as you're looking for jobs. And I think what you're hinting at too and you're seeing is there are a lot of big firms that take advantage of the fact that their name means something, but they view quants as like a commodity. We'll just grind them out. We don't care. I think, for example, like I've never actually talked to a lot of people at DE Shaw, but and you look at their application process, it's very different. You just submit a resume. There's no job posting. A lot of the people have PhDs in very odd and unique areas. And again, it's, it's looking for the insightful, deep analytical thought process. But to your point, a lot of the big names everyone's really excited to work for, they pay a lot. And part of that is you're working tons of hours. I had a buddy of mine that went to work for a fairly well-known firm on the buy side. And he's like, how many hours do your employees work? And I go, 40 hours a week. And he goes, no, no, no. How many hours do your employees actually work? I said, actual work? He goes, yeah. I said, maybe 30 hours a week. And he's like, no, 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 no. I don't get this. Why are your employees not working? And I'm like, my employees are working. They have a full-time job, right? But like, you need, you need time for a coffee or to hit the bathroom or I want to know what your weekend was like. These are the things that make the job enjoyable. And what he was getting at is he was working like 80, 90 hours a week and grinding out. And I was like, so let me put this into perspective mathematically, right? For a lot of students is say entry-level job for a quant, let's say is 100,000 just for simplicity here. And you say, okay, I got an offer from a huge firm that's going to grind me 80 hours a week at 180,000. You're making less money at 180,000 than the individual making 100,000 per hour, right? And you don't have a life anymore. 